Sure. Stiff person syndrome, as you know, was described many years ago at the Mayo Clinic. Um, and in, originally it was called stiff man syndrome because at that time they had found in the initial population for it to be more common in men. But since then we know that it's much more common in women in most cases. And it's a disorder of chronic muscle spasticity. It is immune mediated uh, in almost all cases. And it's really uh, associated with some other more subtle things, but the most problematic part tends to be the muscle spasms and the severity. There are various forms of it. Um, some are partial forms where patients will only have an affected limb, for example. Uh, but there are also other more severe forms where not only is there systemic involvement, but there can be an encephalomyelitis component as well. So it really runs a full spectrum from the more mild version with just a limb all the way through to a full-blown encephalomyelitis. So differences in our study compared to the other large study that was done was done by Andrew McKeown at the Mayo Clinic uh, just a few years ago. Differences in ours that are not surprising tend to just really reflect the nature of our population. The veteran population has much more men, and so therefore we had many more men represented, uh, re excuse me, represented with stiff, stiff person syndrome. And perhaps because we had more men, uh, we seem to have less associated autoimmunity. And by that I mean we know in stiff person syndrome patients they frequently have other associated autoimmunity either personally or in their family, things like thyroid disease, um, other autoimmune conditions. And we found slightly less of that in our sample compared to the Mayo Clinic uh, sample because we had perhaps, this is sort of just our thought on it, more men and autoimmunity in general tends to be less common in men.